7,000 pounds on the nose. This is a Sprinter by Keystone here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Um, we basically carried this camper in our new lineup in the Springdale series. Sprinter, uh, at the time this was built, and really it's still pretty much true, it's just a laminated Springdale. Um, shockingly well kept. This thing has been shockingly well kept. Uh, when this was built, Keystones were known at that time for having not the greatest decals. They built a heck of a coach. Structurally, it's a tank. But um, if you look through this, like all the decals are in great shape. At the time this was built, Keystones were known for having faded, peeling, flaking decals. So that in indicates to me that this was kept at just the very highest level of maintenance. And true to that, on the inside, it smells like the carpets were recently shampooed or something. I don't know what they did, but it has been remarkably well kept. You see the slide awning cover up there for an extra layer of preventative maintenance. I haven't spoken to the previous owners, but knowing what I know about campers, this was stored either under a cover or inside, and I'm gonna guess inside, and then probably still washed and UV waxed on the outside. We've got four corner power stabilizer jacks with a fully enclosed underbelly. And one of the things that Keystone's done for years to help with their seasonality of RVs is they have a large furnace on these. This has a 30,000 BTU furnace in a class that usually has 20 to 24,000. That extra power plus the underbelly enclosure really helps get you through the spring and the fall season super, super comfortably. And you know something people don't think about is the underbelly enclosure helps with your summertime too because it uh, helps the prevent the air conditioner, uh, the cold air from bleeding out of the underbelly because, you know, cold air falls. So it hits the floor and it starts to bleed out. That extra layer down there just slows that process down. Big power awning on this, and I like that we have a clean, unobstructed patio space, lots of room for um, picnic tables. Um, this has got hybrid construction where it's partially stick-built, partially um, uh, aluminum skeleton. Oops, did I, which one did I lock here? Did I lock the wrong one? Top one. There we go, dummy. Anyway, this has a big bunkhouse garage storage space here, and I've got some wicked backlighting, but I think you get the idea. Now, they had the spare tire off, I'm gonna guess for a bike rack, but notice they didn't just let it grind on the floor, they put nice little foam padding down so that it wasn't gonna get all scarred up down there or anything like that. Lock this down here real quick. A um, little black tank flush and a little door side spray port there, which is handy. So if you get a little hose, you can hook up to that. You can kind of do some campsite cleanup, hose the kids down. I like the bigger entry handle here. I mean, all in all, this has been well kept. This has been very well kept. Stepping inside, the well kept story continues just about as you would expect. Uh, this is a air mattress style hide -a bed I haven't looked around to find the bladder and the reason I didn't even bother is because my experience was most of those things were junk in the first place. They drove me nuts when they came out in new RVs. They never worked well. But what's funny is you go to Walmart, you get a $16, $17 air bed, throw it on there and it works like a champ. It's just funny how that works out. Now this is an exceptionally big U-Dinette. For a long time, Keystone went to these these 42 inch extremely deep U-Dinettes. And I can tell you it's 42 inches because it sticks out six inches past a 36 inch deep slide. Do the math, there you go. That folds down into a big sleeper and you see that there's the, uh, the drawer on that end or the door rather to get to the storage below that bench. So you can really comfortably sit a bunch of people around there. Very good for keeping little kids corralled at the rear bench. That's why I like taking uh, my daughter to a booth when we eat somewhere. Uh, you know, she just has a hard time sliding out, wiggling around. Very clean in here. Central air, central heat. Um, pretty respectable cabinet space in here too. I like the wraparound overhead cabinet. Um, it's easier to get to from both sides, plus it's, it's just flat out bigger. There's just more storage in there. You can keep a lot of mac and cheese up there, my friends. Um, down below here, I like that they didn't waste the drawer space or the potential for drawer space under the oven. You see that they actually did utilize that. And everybody loves a little flip up countertop. Why waste the space, you know, use something uh, there. Good looking bathroom in this too, but before I move on, I want to point out so someone's gonna say, yeah, but where's the pantry? This could be a pantry, this could be an overflow closet. I mean, you can see in the background of the image right now that there is dedicated bunkhouse storage in there. So this could be bathroom linen space, this could be overflow pantry space, it could be a little bit anything you want it to be. But back to the bathroom that I was starting to talk about. Good looking, I mean, it, it's a bathroom. It doesn't, it's not like it's supposed to be this aesthetically amazing thing, but it's like, it's got good looks to it. That triple mirror right there 
it, when you stand in front of it, it's like you can see all around yourself. And if you're, you know, like me and your face breaks mirrors, well, then you avoid that. But most of you are going to be just fine. Oops, bumped the cabinet there. So they put um, breeze windows anywhere they could. Now, the lower bunk on the opposite side does not have a breeze window because, remember, it has that uh, bunk garage door right there. Oops, camera's having a hard time adjusting to all the light interchange. It'll sort itself out in a minute here. Come on, camera. There you go. One of these days, I should probably get some proper hardware. But I ain't, I'm not Steven Spielberg. I don't know anything about cameras. I just point at stuff, and I talk like an idiot about campers, and people seem to appreciate it. Anyway, moving on. Dedicated storage space here in the bunks, as I mentioned before. And I, I like the little shoe cubby down there. I could see that being good for a lot of shoes, but frankly, this thing's going to get packed every time you go camping. There are TV hookups here. If you allow the kids to bring entertainment stuff along, you're all set there. Um, sliding privacy doors for the bunkhouse as well as the master bath too and that's something you don't get a lot of that is a nice touch they did here in the sprinter here at keystone uh or pff, at halid rv this is a keystone at halid rv there we go um a uh, a lot of times what you run into is uh sliding doors for mom and dad up front but not privacy door for the bunk in the back and this really hammered down all that home tv can spin around to face both sides folks did have a tv installed so you can see the mount points, that'll be very easy to follow along and mount something right where they had it. That is DVD, that is stereo, that does most of your entertainment needs and whatnot. Looking up here, again, pocket doors for mom and dad. And uh, just a, I don't know, normal keystone bedroom. Nothing fancy to be found here, but it's effective. You know, this is a simple function space. Mom and dad's bedroom in a bunkhouse, it's only here to serve you at night. Because during the day, mom and dad roam the whole cabin. You don't need to be relegated to just this little space. But on a rainy day, when everyone's stuck inside, that's when you're going to appreciate the big super slide here. And 7,000 pounds, this is very half ton towable. So give us a call, 800-256-5196. Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.